Good morning, everybody. It is still dark outside, but it is time to rise and grind. Okay, so in my last video, we talked about how increasing your metabolism is actually almost impossible and how we place too much emphasis on increasing muscle mass to increase metabolic rate or to try to increase metabolic rate when we should be focused on feeding the systems that keep us alive in order to optimize metabolism. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please go back and check it out because in this one will make a lot more sense, okay? But to recap the last one, you can't significantly increase your metabolism. Again, you can optimize it, but you can't increase it because it's not driven by muscle mass. It's driven by your brain, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, etc. In fact, your brain alone consumes up to 25% of the total calories that your body needs on a daily basis. Now, think about it. Most of us have relatively low daily outputs. We sit at desks all day, we travel by car, we get home and watch Netflix, we sit to work, we sit to travel, we sit to eat, we sit to relax when we haven't even been on our feet all day. We sit through our kids' school plays, we sit at the movies, we sit with friends over coffee, we sit at the bar to watch grown-ass men play sports while we stuff our faces with nachos and beer, right? And then we justify it all with, oh yeah, but I went to the gym today, right? Like, wow, big deal. You worked out for almost an hour, your brain literally works 24-7, 365. It never rests. You ever wonder why you can go to the gym, work your butt off, sweat, lift, crank your heart rate, push till your lungs burn and your legs are wobbly, and then finish the workout and feel body tired, but still feel that energized high? Like you know you worked hard and you're gonna feel it tomorrow, but you're like, dang, I crushed it today. I'm a badass, right? But then you have one of those days at the office where you're pouring through files and reports and paper trails and numbers and data and you're hammering away at your laptop and your boss is barking deadlines at you and you get home and you haven't moved in like 10 hours but you get home and you are dead to the world you're exhausted you got nothing left don't even talk to me about going to the gym it's all you can do to like actually lower your butt down to the couch, right? So why is that? Well, it's because your brain just worked out for like 10 hours. Can you imagine if you had to go to the gym and put in 10 hours of focused, deliberate, relentless training with almost no time to rest? Maybe you got like two 15 minute breaks and a half hour lunch. And other than that, you had to bench press and squat and deadlift for like 10 hours. If you had to work out for that many hours in a day, then don't you think you'd need more food? Don't you think you'd need more calories in order to sustain that amount of work? Of course. But your brain handles that kind of workload all day long, not just for 10 hours. It does it for 24 hours a day. But we place so much emphasis on increasing muscle mass to increase metabolism that we miss the critical factor, which is feeding the brain and the rest of the systems that never shut off. If there aren't enough calories going in to sustain the systems that keep you alive, your brain will go into self-protection. It'll go into self-preservation mode and enter fight or flight in order to protect itself and sustain life. That's the only thing it's programmed for is survival. Some dude jumps out at you in a dark parking lot as you're getting in your car and your brain goes into that fight or flight state. It elevates your heart rate and oxygen intake. It stimulates a release of adrenaline. It heightens your senses. It's making decisions for you faster than you can even process what's happening. You don't have to think about your heart pumping blood through your body every day. Your brain just programs it and tells it to do so. You're so good at breathing, you can even do it in your sleep, right? Because that's what your brain is programmed to do, is keep you alive. It's like this, and for any of you with teenage boys, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? 
You ever wonder why growing teenage boys are complete savages in the kitchen? Like, you can't keep them out of the fridge. The pantry's always empty. They come home from school and eat a box of craft dinner with two glasses of milk before supper. Then they have a double helping at supper. They have a protein shake before they go to football practice and then eat two peanut butter sandwiches and a bowl of ice cream before they go to bed and you can still see their ribs. Well, what's really happening here? When growing teenage boys first hit this stage, they shoot straight up but they're thin looking and lanky and kind of uncoordinated like puppies, right? Like their limbs are all over the place and they're all kind of gangly and awkward looking, right? Well, these kids aren't growing big and tall because they won't stop eating. They can't stop eating because they're growing big and tall. Most kids hit that initial growth spurt and they get a whole bunch taller but oftentimes they get really long and thin at the same time, and yet they still can't stop eating. They can't not stop eating because they're packing on muscle mass, but because their brain and their heart and lungs and liver and kidneys are all growing so fast. The systems that consume 75% of their daily caloric needs are growing so fast that the demand for calories to maintain that machine and keep it running is through the roof. Then the hormones kick in, and along with the increased calorie intake, then we start to see those same kids fill out with muscle. But the increase in metabolism comes before the increase in muscle mass, not the other way around, which again proves the point that muscle mass does not significantly boost or regulate metabolism, okay? So the title of this video, here's how your brain holds you back from getting the results you're looking for. Your metabolism is a lot like the survival mechanism that kicks in when someone's at risk of freezing to death, okay? The brain perceives a threat, the threat of dying of exposure and it starts to protect itself by slowing down or shutting down non-essential systems. Digits and limbs start losing blood flow and eventually freeze in order to redirect heat to internal organs. Glucose uptake decreases. Heart rate and respiration slow down to preserve energy. Everything is working to preserve fuel and heat for the systems that are keeping you alive. Well, your metabolism kind of works the same way. When the brain perceives the threat of low calorie consumption for too long, it also starts slowing down and shutting down non-essential systems in order to preserve fuel. The body literally starts getting rid of stuff it doesn't need. You don't need 20 inch biceps to survive. So the brain starts initiating catabolism and breakdown of that non-essential tissue that it can get rid of in order to save 25% of your total caloric needs from muscle mass in order to redirect that fuel system to the tissues that are eating up the other 75% of your caloric needs. So what does this all do? Well, again, over time, it slows the metabolic rate, decreasing your ability to maintain muscle mass and burn fat, which is ultimately why crash diets produce an initial loss of body weight, but then cause a rebound effect, usually bringing an additional gain on top of the rebound. So. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Go crush the rest of the day, and I will see you next time on The Last Rep.